As the holiday season approaches, for a lot of families that means traveling. And in a lot of those instances, it means traveling without your four-legged furry family member. In today's video, we're going to talk about six things to keep in mind when choosing boarding for your dog, and how it can make that travel away from them just a little bit easier. I'm Ken Steep, and welcome back to McCann Dogs. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We post you videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to help you spend some quality time with your dog. Traveling without your dog can be really stressful, and oftentimes the most stressful part is figuring out what you're going to do with them as you prepare for your trip. First you need to consider what kind of boarding you want to do with your dog, and what kind of dog you have. For example, there's in-home boarding and kennel boarding. Puppies would be a great example of a dog that would probably do better in an in-home boarding situation. Puppies uh, may not be used to the uh, loud environment and the change of environment, for example. Uh, they don't have the coping mechanisms to deal with uh, all those changes and, and all those stressors. And sometimes puppies can have you know, a behavior-altering uh, experience if they feel overwhelmed in a scenario like that. So uh, in-home boarding may be the best solution for a puppy. A very senior dog is another example of a dog that may do best in an in-home boarding situation. Uh, you know, the uh, older senior dogs who may have lived uh, in a more quiet environment over the course of their life may have trouble adjusting to the, the noise and the activity inside a kennel. So they may be another consideration for a dog that would be best suited for in-home boarding. Another consideration with in-home boarding is do you want someone to come into your house to look after your dog or do you want to take your dog to someone else's house to be looked after? That needs to be something that you think about uh, and make a decision on before you choose in-home boarding. A kennel, on the other hand, is a great choice for those dogs who require a little extra exercise. Some kennels offer a board and train program or a daycare program where your dog can be taken out uh, multiple times over the course of the day and they can burn off some steam so that they're even more rested overnight. Regardless of which type of boarding you choose, it's important to ask a few questions of the people who will be looking after your dog. For example, what will they do if your pet has a medical emergency? Do you need to provide vet veterinary information? Do you need to provide insurance information? Where will your dog be kept during the day and during the night, and is there a difference? How much exercise will your dog get during the day? How many and what kind of dogs will be interacting with yours? And what kind of supervision is there during that playtime? What kind of inoculations do they require for the pet to be under their care? How big will your dog's area be? Will your dog have an individual area? And this can be really important for some dogs because it's important that they get some time if they're in a really wild and crazy playful environment that they get some alone time that they can just unwind and hang out in their crate or cage or wherever. Also ask, what do they feed? Some kennels insist on feeding their own food while others allow you to maintain your dog's current diet and that's gonna be really important in my mind. Be sure to include a list of instructions for your dog. It can include things like their dietary restrictions. Maybe their social restrictions. Maybe they shouldn't be out playing with multiple dogs at the same time. Uh, a list of their medications. Anything you think that the staff should be aware of, make sure you include it in a printed list. Bring some things so that your dog feels at home. This can include things like their bed, or their blanket, or their favorite chew toy. But keep in mind, some dogs get stressed in these environments and they may chew all of those things, their bed and their blanket, as well as their chew toys. So all of those things that you bring along shouldn't be a potential hazard if they do get chewed. If you're going away for any length of time, it's really important that you try a night first. So maybe two weeks before you take your uh, long vacation that your dog goes into that facility for one night. That way you can get them out the next morning and figure out if there's going to be any issues, any concerns that the staff might have, or any concerns that you might have can be rectified before you leave, uh, whether it's the country or the local area for any length of time. It'll make you feel a lot more at ease that your dog is comfortable. And remember to book early. The last thing you want is to have done all of this work and put in all of this effort only to find out that the facility that you've chosen isn't available. So make sure you get your pet booked in there really early and some of them get very busy around the holiday season. So I hope these tips help your dog have a more comfortable stay while you're away, and I hope they make you more comfortable while you're away that you've done your homework up front. If this is your first time on the channel, make sure you hit that subscribe button. We publish new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday to help you spend some quality time with your four-legged family member. Check out that video. That's actually a video that YouTube thinks you'll want to watch next. On that note, I'm Ken. Happy training.